As we saw in the previous lecture, you can use the datetime uh, class as a type in Moose. So you can set an attribute to be required to be of datetime class. What if you want to do something of your own? You just want to create your own class, so you call your own type. Of course you can create a separate class and then you can use that as a type, but in many cases that's just too much work. So Moose allows you to create your own type with your own constraints in a very easy way. Let's say you want to add sex to the person. So it should be all either male or female and, and we're using just the letter M or F in our case. So you would this is the way you would reuse it. So you would create a person object with the new, giving it a name, um, and then set the sex vi via the sex method, setting to, to M. And then uh, if you call the getter of the same method, it would, should print out M. And that is what it does. But if you call it with uh, some other word, let's say for male, because you thought that it should work as well, that would uh, throw you an exception. That's what we would like to, to have. So the way uh, we can implement it is here. This is the module. We added the Moose Util Type Constraints uh, module that brings in the subtype function. And the subtype function uh, can do the following. So you give it a, a name, any name here, but uh, it's preferable to have it in a namespace that's within your own application. So because I'm creating a person, uh, I decided that all the, all the types I'm going to create within this person project or, or um, application would be within the person namespace. Within there, there's a type. I put a type namespace and only within there going to be the various, uh, various uh, types. That's uh, that makes it easier to organize things and you make sure that they, they won't clash with other classes of um, other parts of a project. Then you say it's a subtype of what? So the subtype needs to be based on some existing type and we are saying it is just a string because it's really just a string. It just can accept either M or F. And the second uh, entry here is where, which is the or additional constraint and when the type is being checked then the value the actual value is in dollar underscore so now you can put here a condition any condition and here I explicitly said that it's either the letter F or the letter M and not only that you can also add a message and it's a bit wider than the screen so you can add a message that will be printed when the constraint fails, when you give some uh, different information. Um, and here inside you can also use the dollar underscore, so you can actually your error message can contain the real value that we're given and if you go on here you see that the full message is will contain the real value that was given and even the list of the accepted values. So it can be very user friendly. And then once you created the subtype, you can set up uh, an attribute, and uh, the attribute will have the isa will be a person type sex, so the the one that we have just created here, and that's it. And then once you did this, you will this will work, and uh, you will be able to set m, and it will print out uh, the letter m back to you. And if you try to set uh, mail, then here, this is the error message you're going to get. So the attribute sex does not pass the type constraint because that's just generic text. And here is the text that I prepared. So the dollar underscore, the mail is here. The current value is here. And that's it. So you can also, you can both use uh, an existing class, like datetime, in, in this example, in the birthday example, or you can create your own subtype and then use that in your uh, moose-based classes.